ask you something. Does success feel hard to you? Do you have this belief that it's hard to make money, that you're constantly chasing money, that you're constantly chasing success, looking for the next training, the next book, the next leader, the next video, to really find the answers that are going to help you create success? If that is the case, I wanna help you make the biggest shift you can possibly make to help you create the success that you long for. And that is for you to really go on mission, become mission driven instead of money hungry. The money is a byproduct of the mission that you put yourself on and that God has in store for you. So today I'm gonna to give you some really simple tweaks so you can stop chasing and start creating a mission that people are so excited to go on with you. And if you're just tuning in for the first time on this channel, what's up? My name is Jen Johnson and I'm so excited you're here. My mission is to really help you learn how to build your faith and your business together so you can create more purpose in your work and impact in the world doing exactly what God designed you to do. So. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell below so we can hang out here every single week and you can really get in tune with what God is calling you to create and work. And the cooler part is that this is a brand new segment on my channel called Coffee and Jesus because all you need in the morning is a little bit of coffee and a whole lot of Jesus to get your day started right. And we'll be talking about biblical principle and leadership concepts to help you tweak those ideas you have in your mind because true story, God has a much bigger plan in store for you than you have for yourself. And it's time we line up with his plan so we can really get to those places that we're looking to go. All right, so I am gonna give you five tweaks that you could make Today, when you start to shift from getting to giving, when you start to shift in the way that you're thinking, not thinking with the patterns of the world, but renewing our mind, as it says in the Bible, we start becoming the person God created us to be, to go out there and create impact in the world, to contribute the way that we have been blessed with the talents and the gifts that we have. So with these five tweaks, if you apply them, you're going to start seeing a lot of different results show up for you in a bigger way, and you're going to start to feel more fulfilled in the work that you're doing. Instead of just going around chasing, trying to make a buck here, a buck there, you're really going to start to create a movement with, with your business. See, Jesus knew his exact mission as to why he was put on earth. In John 4, 34, it says, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me from finishing his work. And he was aware of his mission from his very last breath on the cross when he said, It is finished. See, we all have a mission, but it's up to us to really get connected to what that is. When we're going around trying to fake it till we make it, and we're going around trying to pretend, copy, and compare, we really start to feel out of alignment. We feel phony, we feel salesy, we feel all these different things because we're not in alignment. So once we get there, things start to flow, we start to feel more of a natural ease with what it is that we're doing and the message that we're creating. So shift number one, have focus. We need to get extremely focused on what it is that we're looking to create as far as impact in the world. A lot of times there's this shiny object syndrome, and again, we're chasing opportunity, we're chasing new business models, we're chasing the money. Wherever the money is, we wanna do that thing. And then we start to get overwhelmed, we start to lose focus, we start to feel all over the place and not in line with anything because we're just running around. It's a lot like a kid that's lost in a store. What do we tell kids when, if they ever get lost in a store? We tell them to stand still. If they stand still, we have a better chance of finding them. And it's really hard for an audience to find you if we have all these different opportunities and all these different things going on in different niche markets and different blueprints and different plans. It's like people can't figure it out. They think, what do you do? Like, what is this thing that you're doing? You're, one day you're selling this, the other day you're selling that. We get to be very, very focused and be set in what it is that we're looking to do to really impact people's lives. And it doesn't have to be in a thousand different ways. Pick the one thing that you're most passionate about. The biggest shift that you need to, that you believe needs to change in the world, focus on that. 
The second thing is say no to the things that are not congruent with your mission. A lot of times we hear, oh, I just don't have enough hours in the day, I don't have enough time. What do you need to start saying no to to make time for the focus that you need to have towards your mission? You know, if we're saying yes to everything, we start to get lost in the drift. We start to lose our sense of what it is that we're doing. And we start to make everybody's emergencies our priorities. And there's so many ways to make money. I get it. That doesn't mean we go out there and do every way to make money. We focus on our mission. We focus on our model and we go out there and laser in, you know, when light gets focused, it can cut through steel, right? It becomes very sharp and very poignant. And so I want to encourage you to start saying no to the things that are not in line with where you're going. And you will, again, as a byproduct, create more profit, just honing in on the one thing. Shift number three, become service driven. Who are you serving today? Who are you making an impact for today? So often we're so focused on the likes and the numbers and how many followers we're getting and how many people are messaging us. Who have you messaged today? Who have you gone and served today and made an impact for? It's not about getting. Again, getting is a byproduct of the seeds that we plant. How many seeds are you planting? Is it one here, one there? Or are you broadcasting far and wide? We really wanna go out there and focus on serving from a place of like not having anywhere to get. We're just serving to serve and people are going to really fall in love with your mission when you get focused and when you're not running around all over the place and when you're saying yes to the right things people start to notice what it is you're doing to make that impact in the world. Number four, recognize opportunity. There are so many doors that are opening that we oftentimes miss out on because we're so busy being consumed by everything. And so are the doors that are opening in line with God's word and your mission and your values and your beliefs. So often we get confused and think, oh my gosh, I'm just waiting on God to tell me what to do. There are so many opportunities out there that you get to say yes to or you get to say no to. You just have to learn to discern which doors are the right ones to walk through. How do we know that? By getting in line, by getting quiet, by reading God's word and knowing his will through his message to us. And by getting intentional, if we're, are you doing it just to fill your bank account or is this something that is really in line with your message and your mission that you're really putting out to help serve people? Shift number five, build deep, not wide. So often we want this big ginormous audience and we're looking for the fame or we're looking for the recognition. But when you go deep, you start to build a really loyal tribe. You start to build repeat business, repeat buyers. I remember when I started the term Purpose to Profit community, which is all centered around Christian entrepreneurship, I had a lot of people telling me, Jen, I don't know, that might not be a good idea because you're really gonna, you know, some people might be annoyed by that. Some people not, might not be supportive of that. Well, the reality is, is that is the calling. That is the vision God gave me to really start incorporating ministry into my work. And so I really get to shift into standing in my truth, standing in my belief. And because of that, I'm attracting the people who actually have the same values and belief system that I do. And they want to work with me because of it. See, we get to stand for something or fall for everything. And what is it that you're doing to really stand in your truth instead of copying, comparing, and competing with everybody else? Be okay with attracting the right people instead of trying to please everyone. Are you ready for an aha? Not even God can please everyone, right? So why are we trying to do something that even God can't do? God is never pleasing everybody. So we get to realize that we're never going to please everybody. So you might as well stand in your truth and do the thing God has called you to do. And here's a bonus tip for you. When you're creating something, when you're, I want you to cast your vision out, see into the future. What do you want your business to look like? What type of audience do you want to serve? What solutions can you really give to a certain crowd? 
Create from future, not from current circumstance. See, the current circumstance you have is a byproduct of things you've created in the past. So if we want to change our current circumstance, we get to step into unknown territory, into future, into creating from something that's not there. And this is where I call it faith it till you make it. Don't fake it, don't copy, don't compare, don't compete. Have faith in the vision and the impressions and the ideas God is giving you and put your best foot forward in faith. When we don't know where we're going, we don't know how to get there. And if we don't know how to get there, we certainly won't help others get there. So it's really important that we get clear on the mission God has for us in our work. So what does that look like for you? I would love to hear some of your ideas in the comments below. And here's the biggest thing that's going to help you. Get into quiet time every single day with God. Read his word, journal, allow yourself to sit in complete silence for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, watch the sunset, watch the sunrise, and get quiet and ask God what it is he wants to show you, and be present, and be open, and be quiet. And if you need help with that, I have a Christian Entrepreneur Quiet Time Guide to help you get started. This is my exact quiet time routine, and I'll put it below so you can download that and have some resources available to you, along with a video I made on the entire uh, download that I created. So you can check that out next. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really hope this brought you some value, some food for thought, get your juices flowing. And hey, if you ever want to reach out, my inbox is always open. You can reach me over on Facebook at Meet Jen Johnson. I would love to connect with you. God bless. Until next time, I'll see you soon.